Hi guys, my name is Andrew, if you don't know me. Uh, I have a little YouTube channel where I do mostly psychology stuff, but today I wanna do a book re review on Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. So I read this book, and um, let me go through this really quick backstory. So I was in a bird accident. If you guys don't know, the birds are like those uh, electronic scooters that they have in the city. I was on one one night, and this happened like three weeks ago. Um, apparently I did like a front flip off it, and I woke up in the hospital. So this is why I look like Zuko from uh, the last airbender, I literally have road rash all over my face, lovely, but I had time uh, after like the first week of surgery to read through this whole book, and uh, normally I am psychology related, but I have been getting more into spirituality, I think the two go kind of hand in hand, and it's hard to find any spirituality stuff in psychology, uh, it's, you know, it's hard to empirically prove spirituality stuff, so they kind of stay away from it, it gives a bad rap for the field, it's supposed to be science. But I really enjoyed this book, and I think that a lot of what I learned in here goes hand-in-hand -hand with uh, the core belief model and cognitive behavioral therapy and other psychology stuff that I've learned about. So I'm going to do a pretty basic book review. This book is 300 and something pages. It is enormous. I have never, I don't know if you can see, I've never highlighted and wrote so much in a book before. This was amazing and just a lot. Um, so I highly recommend you read it. But I'm going to go through a very brief, um, just kind of, biography on this book. All right, so A New Earth is pretty much where Eckhart Tolle describes um, the flowering of consciousness that's supposed to happen in this era. Um, I have a friend, Sarah, that has a podcast, and she talks about being in the age of Aquarius now and how we're supposed to get into a more of a spiritually set mindset and kind of next dimensional thinking. So if you guys don't know much about spirituality, enlightenment is pretty much, at least when Eckhart Tolle describes it, is being com completely present in one with the present moment. So enlightened individuals are completely whole with the universe. Um, so Eckhart Tolle describes a lot of a lot of a lot of detail about the ego um, but we're gonna go over it really quickly so the ego in Freud's terms was pretty much the representation of the outer world um, or thought so it was like form um, you know everything you see around you all your thoughts in your head your identity that's how Freud described it and Eckhart pretty much describes it in a similar way um, Eckhart totally describes the ego as dysfunction with the present moment so that's what the ego is it's just dysfunction with the present moment um, what does that mean, right? So everyone hears the term ego and it's very broad and I still don't think I 100% understand it, but I've gotten way more advanced ever since I started understanding psychology and spirituality, what the ego is. It's pretty much your identity or at least your construction of what you think your identity is. So my ego would be, I'm Andrew, I'm 26 years old, I'm Caucasian, wherever that term came from, uh, I am Italian and I'm studying psychology, I'm a student, so any label that you're gonna throw on yourself would be your ego. Um, and the ego comes from a place of wanting. So the ego is never satisfied, it's never you know, happy. Your ego is anytime you say something like, I want this car, or I need this relationship, or I won't be happy. Anytime you come from a place of lack, that's the ego. Um, so Eckhart describes you know, when you're not living through your ego, you're in the present moment. So when you're in the present moment, there's no lack. You are one with where you need to be. You're not concerned about the future. You're not worrying about the past. You're not anxious. You're not depressed. Um, and this is me very much so simplifying it, but I think it does go with the cognitive behavioral uh, therapy core belief model. So a big part of cognitive behavioral therapy, and if anyone doesn't know, CBT is one of the most evidence-based therapies. It's one of the most used therapies today because there's a lot of positive evidence that it works. And it pretty much just goes from the cognitive cognition, how you think is how you behave. So um, Eckhart pretty much is stating that the ego is your thinking, your, your thinking patterns in general are, are misaligned. And CBT does that as well. You know, your thinking patterns are messed up. Um, you believe things that aren't necessarily true and it's making you sick, pathological, unhealthy. All right, and then Eckhart also describes when we say I. So when we're kids, we learn to say me, my, I, and how that in itself is the ego, how we use it in English anyways. Um, so again, my car my shirt, um, my boyfriend, any of that stuff comes from the ego. It comes from a place of lacking and it's like a zero sum game. So Eckhart also describes the ego as zero sum. I win, you lose. I'm right, you're wrong. You have, I don't have. Anytime there's lack or anytime that you're better than someone else, um, that's egoic thinking because you don't have what I have. Um, you can't make a video online, but I can. Or what you have to say is inside what I had to say. That's all ego. When you're actually at the present moment, you're living enlightened, there is none of that zero sum. Everybody wins. It's a win-win, not a win-lose. And then this was a really interesting thing for me that kind of, it was like an aha moment for me. So um, Eckhart starts talking about the ego uh, and he says, the ego is always self-interested. So 
even if I say, and I've said this before quite a lot actually, I wanna help people, right? I'm getting a psychology because I wanna help people. Uh, Eckhart would claim that that statement is actually egoic. It's not present, it's not an enlightened statement to say that. It actually is disguising something that isn't moralistic as a moralistic statement. So the reason for that is I say that I wanna help people. So again, it's, it's a zero sum game. Whenever I'm helping people, that means somebody needs help. Uh, this person doesn't know as much as me, they don't have as much as me, I'm in a higher position to help them. So from that, the ego's trying to defend itself, that you know, you're know you more moral, you're better than this person, even if it doesn't feel like that. And even, it's really important to mention, even if you don't think that when you say it, it still is your ego. And the ego pretty much is thrives on unconscious. That's how the ego survives, it's unconscious. And you'll hear this in psychology a lot too, your unconscious self. Um, and that is literally, things that you're not aware of that's all it is is you're unconscious of these thoughts and emotions and your limited perception which as human beings we all have a very limited perception and then another example is this is why gossip is so popular so uh if you guys i know this has happened to you it's happened to me all the time you know something and someone else doesn't you're about to tell them have you heard the news oh my gosh and for that brief second you're really really excited and you're joyful because you know something that other person doesn't so that's your ego again that's something that a zero-sum game. I'm smarter than this person. I'm about to enlighten them on something that they don't know. How could they not have known? I'm going to get joy out of it. That's totally an egoic thing. Um, so I just thought that was interesting. You know, that's why gossip is popular uh, because it comes from the ego. It makes you feel good. It brings up positive emotion that isn't genuine positive emotion, but it's masked as positive emotion from the ego. All right, so I'm just going to read a quick quote from the book uh, in reference to ego again. Uh, totally is talking about um, the really common ways that we substitute our lack, the ego, with things that we think are gonna make us happy. And I thought this was really insightful. He says, the most sought after cover up for the continuous background unease are intimate relationships, or man or woman who's going to make me happy. So keep that in mind. The whole book is just being about presence. Just be present in the moment. What does that mean? Take a breath, literally in home right now. Just breathe in and breathe out. And while you're doing that, you're not thinking of anything else. You're just being present. You're there, you're totally conscious. Your consciousness, totally aware of itself in that moment. And there's no thoughts going on. That is what this book is all about. The whole book can be described with this sentence. If you want to be enlightened, then you have to be completely present. Present with a capital P. Be present. Um, just like how we don't use the I statements correctly. Our very presence then becomes our identity rather than our thoughts and emotions. Our very presence then becomes our identity rather than our thoughts and our emotions. When you're present in the moment, you're going to be way more alert. You're going to actually pick up on things that people are saying. You're going to be there with them as a human being. You're not going to be worried about the future and you're not going to be in the past. When you do that and you put yourself in that real present situation, the universe opens up to you and then you have so many opportunities and life's going to go so much better for you. So I just wanted to share that. I know this is kind of a hack version of this book review. Um, I could go on literally for four hours, but I recommend you just buy the book um, or at least look up who Eckhart Tolle is. I just had to share this video. I know it's kind of unorganized, but this was just so amazing. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this. I seriously hope this book helps you with your life and helps you awaken consciousness and be present with the moment.